lane fast, call it high speed I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely I be taking shots, yeah, cold-blooded, icy Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing In the front row, run it up when they hype me The following grows, they know how to ignite me Call me CEO, I've been running shit right, see Hey everyone, and welcome back to part two of the TWT podcast So this one here is Friday the 5th of May, 2015 She says, it's really hard for me to post this um even though i already confessed so this is like a whole new can right guys um basically she confessed to everybody that she had made up the story about losing a baby at 22 weeks the way she just like throws out how she lied in such a short amount like i feel like this needs more of an explanation than what she actually gave it was so weird and she always kind of just wanted to have girls as well. And so, like, when she had, I don't know, maybe if she had a girl, she might have put in a bit more effort to parenting. I just I don't know why I see it that way, but it's just, you know, she made up that she had a baby, a baby girl. You know, she had Christopher, was pregnant again, sort of, like, was like, oh, all right, bye, bye Christopher, and then had Caleb. But anyway, she said, this is really hard for me to pose, even though I already confessed. It's about something horrible I did in my past to be liked, to feel special, to have friends, but it got out of hand and I don't know how to end it. Took me almost a year to confess because I knew what would have happened. I kept a horrible lie going on. Her name is Ashley. When I was pregnant, I became friends with a girl over Instagram who had a hard time carrying babies. She miscarried a lot, a lot of stillbirths. I didn't know a lot about this at the time, so I thought this was my chance to fit in and be cool and not be bullied anymore. So I said this story. What the fuck? How does it make you cool to miscarry babies? Hmm? That's wild. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, I got pregnant when I lost my virginity at 15 years old. I went about my pregnancy without any of my family knowing. Me and the dad found out and it was a girl, so I named her Ashley Marie. At, 28, at 23 weeks and three days, I went into labor. The dad drove me to the hospital and I gave birth to her. He blamed me, said I was doing drugs while pregnant. It says doing drive while pregnant, but I'm going to assume that's drugs unless drive is like a word over there. I don't know. <laughs> could be wrong. It could be like psoriasis. <laughs> or cirrhosis, psoriasis, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to get on to Siri with that. Anyway, she says, but that's not the truth. I extended it crazily. It was only a miscarriage, and I don't even believe that part. I felt she was a girl. But I faked a stillborn and to this day I kill myself over it. It haunts me. It teases me daily. I was so scared during my pregnancy with Caleb, karma was going to get me because it took me so long to tell. I was so scared I was just going to give birth to my child at 22 weeks and 3 days. But it didn't happen. I was so thankful and I swore I would never lie about something like that again. Until she lied about the black men raping her. Anyways... Shortly after Christopher, I miscarried again, which was Justin's baby, but it was meant to happen. Me and Justin would never end up a couple, so why have another baby? Then Caleb came, then Caleb came my little surprise. Basically, this is to tell everyone I'm not lying about my rapes, my miscarriages, all my feelings, even though you, make, you may think I am, I'm not. I've confessed to all my lies, so please just leave me alone. <clears throat> yeah. Um, ask a few of the mums what makes it cool. I know. I know. Spoiler, she does lie about this again. I know. <laughs> and why would you keep, like, now she's like, oh, I did lose, I lost this baby, I miscarried, I had a stillbirth. And she knows that this blog is still out there and everyone can read it. That's wild. Okay. So she says, today I felt the need to share this. I've been raped seven times. I want to show the world you can overcome it. You can overcome anything. You're such a beautiful, amazing, strong person. My favorite quote is, God doesn't let anyone fail. He gives his strongest warriors the hardest battles, but he knows you can always overcome it. <clears throat> so today I'm going to share one of my most breathtaking, horrifying stories just to prove you can get past it. It was a dark night. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Fucking it's nighttime and it's dark. Whew. My friend and I were drunk and hungry. <laughs> this is so dramatic. So we decided to walk into the store and it was late because it's night, guys. It was late because it's night. I just want to reiterate as well that I am not 
making fun of anyone, you know, I'm not trying to be that person that thinks it's funny that someone has been raped or anything. The only reason I'm taking this approach is because I know this is a lie because she admitted that this is a lie, okay? Um, bet she Google quotes about strength when she posted this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had amazing laughs on our walk. We were happy to be alive. Then something terrifying happened. A black van slammed its brakes on next to us. We tried to run because we were so scared, but the driver had already jumped out and started beating on my friend. I ran back to help her. Now, does anyone know if um, Alison's friend has ever come forward to you know, corroborate this story or... I don't know. Anyways, where am I up to? No way this was happening. We were crying. Next thing I know, two guys dressed in black jumped out of the black van. That's a lot of black stuff. They grabbed me and they threw me in the van. The driver gave my friend one last throw to the ground so he could run back to the van and drive. We drove, seemed like forever. They were picking at my body, pulling my hair and running their knife against my boobs and saying horrible things. So I'm guessing from this, the friend was left behind and they chose Alison. <laughs> okay. Um... It just seems like that way. So they, they yeah, the driver gra- gave my friend one last throw to the ground so he could run back to the van and drive. So I'm, I'm guessing they left the friend behind. And Allison was like the cream of the crop. Rawr. They said they were going to kill me once they were done. I was crying so hard. We got to a house, a house where they said no one will hear me scream. They dragged me inside. They threw me down, hit me. They broke bones. They forced my clothes off. I fought to keep them on. Like, they broke bones. What bones, Alison? Like, you'd think you'd be a little bit more... I don't know. <laughs> Everything I've had to comment on that you say it, lol. I, I'm sorry. I just... When I... This stuff, like, it drives me insane because there are people that actually experience these things and you're going to sit there and, like, make it up and be like, it was a dark, dark night. Like, was it raining too? Because it usually starts with that. Like, you know in the movies when they're, like, talking about how they're, you know, oh, oh, where's your mum? And the mum's obviously died. Like, oh, you know, this, there's this one night and they were driving home and it was raining and it was dark and they were in the car. That's, it sounds like that. It's, it's annoying because, like, no one, I don't know, just the way it's dramatised, I feel like this would be a hard enough story to tell if it was actually true. And we know it's not true. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she's a liar. Like, I know she's a liar <laughs> because she has admitted this. Um, so she says... Um, no, why is this happening to me? I screamed. All they did was laugh and then I felt a sharp pain down in my privates. One of them had stabbed me. Then they raped me. They took turns. It was so painful. They just stabbed me, but they continued to hurt me. Okay. After that, I was just laid there as they continued. Next thing I know, I have a gun at my head. While the last guy was having his turn, I was crying, but with no emotion. <laughs> like, it's not a story without a gun, is it? I was dead. This was it. Then I heard a sound. It was like a door being kicked in. (laughs) It was the cops. They had come. Someone heard my screams and saved my life. (laughs) These three men had gotten arrested. I was so thankful. I was sent right to the hospital to get my vagina checked out. (laughs) I had had to have 34, 34 stitches. I shouldn't laugh, but yeah, they stabbed her. Then they raped her because... Oh my god, this is so oh my god, it's so dramatic. Um, but like I had to go and get my vagina checked out. I had to have 34 stitches. I still have a scar, but I can't show it. Mm-hmm. These men are still in prison. It just shows that you can overcome something uh, you can overcome everything thrown your way. I'm sorry if this triggers anyone, but I really needed to share. People say I'm lying about my rapes all the time, but I'm not. It actually happened. Oh, if you say it happened, it must have happened. I'm crying as I type this because if you're a rape victim, you can talk to me. I've been there. Don't let, don't, don't live to let it define you. You define you, not rape. So yeah. What about the scar from being stabbed though? Hmm, interesting. Well, it's on a vagina and she can't show it apparently. Um, Thirty-four stitches from a stab wound in the vagina. This is the last one on there. Since I was seven years old, I've struggled with mental health, depression, anxiety. 
affected my life in every way, every single day. Up until grade three, I was liked, I was cool, I was liked and wanted. I felt needed, but even then I wasn't that please. I think I was gonna say peace. I wasn't complete. When my family moved, it was so hard. My depression got worse. I hated my life, my new school. It was then I started being bullied. I hated myself. I always tried to be cool, liked, wanted, but it only got worse. Now, I mean, if you're embellishing stories like this, obviously people aren't going to like you. Like, you know, you're going to read that last story and you can kind of understand, like, what sort of character she has. She's, like, mixing, like, fantasy with reality. Like, she's seen something on the TV and, like, oh, that's a good story. You know, and, and I have heard this same thing, and this is why I always compare Courtney and Alison. They're so alike. Hale himself had said there were times where Courtney would see something on her story, like someone else's story on Instagram, and be like, oh, my God, that's cool. Like, it, it, it might have been, I don't know, someone doing something with their partner, and she'd be like, oh, my God, that is so cool. And she would show Hale and be like, oh, look at this. And Hale would be like, oh, yeah. But then she would go live and tell that story like it was her own story. And I feel like maybe this is what she does. Like she might like watch a movie or something and go, oh, okay, well, that makes for a good story. And, you know, when you're in grade four, obviously you don't have any, you know, if you have a mental illness like this, you probably don't have that perception where you can realise, okay, that sounded really stupid. And people are going to know I'm lying. Like a shitty Lifetime movie, exactly. I thought she said she was just stabbed and needed stitches in her vagina from the gang rape. No, she said she was stabbed in her privates. So I'm assuming that's what she meant. Um, anyway, so she says, I was, um, it got worse to the point I picked up smoking and lying to everyone. I was in grade seven. So that's everybody else's fault. So it's, the bullying was so bad that you decided you're going to pick up lying and smoking. I had forced my mother to quit smoking, but turned around and picked it up myself. By grade eight, I was beyond depressed. I was so good at hiding it until my first time cutting. I would found dull scissors and tried to cut as deep on the vein, as deep as the vein on my wrist. I wanted to cut my vein and bleed out. Obviously, I failed at hiding it. I went to school the very next day, dressed in black, a big baggy hoodie, and I forgot to cover my wrist with my sleeve. <laughs> so with all that effort, to dress yourself in black and wear a big baggy hoodie and then you don't cover your, your, your cut. My principal had seen it by that point. She called my mother. I was so scared to go home, so it took me an hour instead of 20 minutes. When I got home, no one was home, so I went to my room, locked the door. My mother and father came home and yelled at me to unlock the door. I did. I was terrified. My mother stormed into the room, yelled, let me see, so I showed her. She looked at me with so much hurt, then said, next time I'm sending you to the mental hospital. I guess she expected me to stop after that, and I didn't. I used different weapons to cut myself. I loved the hurt. I wanted to die. What good would a mental hospital do, right? I wanted a slow, painful death. No one saw my cuts after that. I kept them hidden, but no one saw how much I was, phys I was hurting either. The same year the bullying had gotten to a physical point, I was horsing around with a friend of mine and a guy stuck his foot out and I fell shoulder first into the ice. It didn't hurt, but I was sent to the nurse's office anyway. I had a broken, broken collarbone and had to go to the hospital. I was so upset it happened. Why me? Why did I deserve this much hate? I was so broken. I was mentally and physically broken. It made me want to take my life even more. I mean, the thing that annoys me with hers is like, she'll tell a story and she has to add like all these extra things. Like I was so broken. It made me want to hurt myself even more. Like the same stuff she just like keeps like reiterating and she could just tell this story so easily. But I feel like, it's more like an attention grab, you know, because if you really were doing this to um, help other people in the same situation, you probably wouldn't be bringing up, I don't know, the cutting and that as much as, like, not dramatising it so much. Like, she really dramatises it. Um, I doubt she started smoking grade seven, but then again, her teeth say that's true. They're pretty bad. I wore a hoodie but didn't cover my wrist. The sleeve of the hoodie didn't cover my wrist. Also, the school told her parents they sent her home in a grave before she could drive, but no one was home. After an unalive temp. Yeah. Bit of a wild story, right? Very weird. Um, the bullying was physical now. I was going to get hurt. I was scared to leave home, go to school because of this. I resulted in cutting more and also deeper. I cried myself to sleep every night because of my pathetic life. I hated everything about myself, my looks, everything. I thought I was too ugly to be liked. Another tragic thing that happened to me during the same year, my mother and father sat us down, all four of us, 
My mother's words were, someone here has a different dad. Just, this is crazy. I burst into tears because my mother started crying. I was praying it wasn't me. He hit me when I was six months pregnant. I looked at her. You and Dylan have a different father. I was instantly broken. I looked at my dad and just cried. I didn't want to believe this. Why was this happening? But that's not the worst part. (laughs) Right after this conversation, my parents asked, what would you say to us getting a divorce? Instantly, I ran to my room and locked the door. No, 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 this can't be happening, is what I screamed to myself. I was torn. Like, she's been pretty dramatic the whole way through here. I didn't know how I was going to make it through this. I was already broken. I broke my parents apart. It was my fault, is what I kept telling myself. I was put in the middle of the divorce, half because I put myself there. I didn't want them to divorce. I was so angry all the time. I was depressed, but I snapped faster than the speed of light itself. (laughs) My parents to this day think I'm bipolar. It runs in my family. One day, my dad angered me so bad that I actually physically abused him. I slammed my elbow down his spine because I knew his back was weak. Then I threw a piece of clay at him, aiming for his stomach, but got his eye. It's a pretty bad fucking shot, hey? At this point, my mother was with a new man. I hated him, maybe because he loved my mum when she should have been loving my dad. I swung at her one time because she angered me so bad, and then my mother's boyfriend wiped her back, grabbed my throat, and threw me up the stairs. Sorry, it's really hard to read because there's a lot of errors. I tried running to my room, but he followed me and pinned me on the bed. My mother came and sat on me, each knee on one arm. All I could do was scream at her and spit in her face until I'd calmed down. It was then I left. 14 years old, I left. I was on my own. My God. My God. Um, It's such a bad book. No, no, no. I was so hurt. Lol, am I supposed to feel like I'm right here? Like right there watching her scream? No, I know. Um, this story is so wild. It's all over the place. I know it is all over the place. It's very hard because it's so distracting. It's like back and forth and I don't know, like it's just, none of it makes any sense. Like I feel like maybe she should have made like the own article for different things. Like, oh, I jumped between homes and finally went into a youth shelter called Stepping Stones. I met amazing people there but started doing drugs. I got into drugs that you you wouldn't think a 14 year old would have heard of. I changed. It wasn't me anymore. Now, this is a lie. She wasn't actually into drugs yet. Like, this is nonsense. I know, we have. We really have had 90 subject jumps already. It's insane. It's very hard to read. Like, I already read through these before so that it would it would make sense. Because sometimes you're reading, like, what the fuck? And I'm still like, what the fucking? So, mum probably ground her for being so defined. Her stepdad stood firm. She ran away. And this is her hyped up version of it. Exactly. Uh, my depression had killed the innocent little girl I once was. My mental illness changed my simple being. I don't think it did. At 15 years old, I signed up for a site called Plenty of Fish. I started selling my body to be able to get drugs and move. I eventually moved in with my uncle's ex-girlfriend. She's 50. There's another one. I continued to sell my body to help pay for groceries and rent. Then I went to a party. <laughs> All right, new topic. I had been raped that night at the party. He had drugged my drink. I was raped. I hated my body even more. But then I met Justin. He made me feel like I was worth something. Made me feel important, pretty. I stopped selling myself and I decided to have sex with him. After a month of having sex with Justin, my uncle's ex-girlfriend looked at me and said, I had a crazy dream you were pregnant. You're pregnant, Alison. Psychic aunt. Is it an aunt? Wait. Was that the art? Were we talking about the art or were we talking about stepmom? I've already forgotten because it's just changed so many times. Jesus, Alison, no, you didn't. I know. Woo! She's going to love this too because she's all like, oh, attention, give me attention. And I was like, you know what? We haven't had an Alison drama for a while. Let's give Alison some attention. She needs it. I was like, are you crazy? I'm not pregnant. No way. Justin's been pulling out. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> shit so I went to the store and I got a pregnancy test I got two why didn't you just say I got two pregnancy tests why did you say like I don't know what the fuck when I got home I ran upstairs and yelled I'm taking it it was negative in her face (laughs) I ran downstairs and said not pregnant she looked at me and said it hasn't been 10 minutes yet check again so I did I was pregnant oh my god um the test went flying I was on the ground crying oh my god 
I told my mum and she told me to move back in, so I did. But I also texted Justin a picture of the test. He didn't respond for nine days. I was horrified, but I had my mother. When he responded, he said it wasn't his. So I was alone my whole pregnancy. I was so sick, my mother and my brother got me my cravings. I was upset. I didn't want that baby, but I loved him. <laughs> he was someone who would love me forever. I didn't want him, but I loved him. I had my son, Christopher James, on October 25th, 2013 at 4.51 p.m. He was beautiful. I was so in love. My depression was gone, or I had at least I had thought. Six weeks, two days after his birth, his father came in the picture. I was so happy. He had his daddy. I was three months postpartum when I got into a fight with my mother. She yelled at me, questioning if I was on my period, and I yelled back telling her I was a day late. I was pregnant again. Two weeks after that, mum kicked me out. I didn't know what to do, so I let Justin have Christopher. I took weekend visits. I was just fine until I got sick, and then I was, then I got back Justin. And when I got back, hold on, let me just, let me just fix this. I'm <laughs> crying. Justin's been pulling out. Like what the fuck? For starters, I don't know. Mm. This is, I know it is so funny. Like what the fuck? So I let Justin have Christopher. I took weekend visits. It was fine, <laughs> exclamation mark, until I got sick. And when I got back, Justin said I couldn't have him for overnights anymore. I was defied. I was beaten. The depression was back 10 times worse. I rarely see my son now. I had my son, Caleb Ma, on November 2nd, 2014 at 9.40am. I had him for five and a half months before CPS threatened me, saying if I didn't give him to, his, to a family member, I'd lose him for good. Why? All because I couldn't, couldn't take his skin disease. I was destroyed. So now my mother has custody of my youngest. It hurts every day. My depression is horrible and I moved away. I've been gone almost a month now and I'm already moving back in July because my depression is so bad with being away from my children. But anyways, that's all I have for now. I'll leave some comments for ideas for other blogs. And luckily that was the end of this oh there's three comments i want to read them hey we are talking about allison these are the comments where did you move away from your kids and why can't you go back now someone said you are a very sweet person i've always loved that quote as well thank you for sharing you're a fucking you're an idiot i missed my 15th birthday i never started selling my body until i was 15 shortly after my virginity okay so that will be all from that. But yeah, it did. It looked like a third degree burn. It was so bad. Now let's go back a little bit because I just want to talk about some of the accusations she made. So that whole vlog that she did, when she was like, it was a black van and it was like black clothes. She had originally said that these were black men. So I, I don't know. But she was very, very, very racist through a lot of, the time and I did find there's a couple of things I won't share on there but I did share on the page so one was the cuts so there was one time there where she put those cuts all over herself and I'm not like they're on the page just as a trigger warning I'm not going to put on the YouTube video because obviously I don't want to um risk it being taken down all right so one of the screenshots I have as well so we have that Theodore I don't know if you remember Theodore but he was a guy she was dating when I think she was with Caleb. When she was with Caleb. When she, when she had Caleb. Like, just after she had Caleb. It was like when she was still living at home. That's him there. I, I know it it's sort of screws it up a little bit. Hey, how you going? So we are doing an Allison. We're talking about Allison's. We've just gone back through when she had Christopher and the and Caleb. So this is like back in 2015, but I have to give you guys a warning, like trigger warning. There is a lot of talk about pretty much anything that can trigger you is in this video. Um, so just so just so you guys know, you remember when she did like when she when she get like 110 pounds in like a week from I oh know she's lose so much weight. She only has Facebook. No, she has Instagram. Her name, it's like Trauma Llama or something. Like T-R-A-W, like W, like, no, not, not a W. T-R-A-U-U-M-A, 
double L something Kerala. Sorry. And she has TikTok as well. So anyway, so this, this screenshot says Theodore Geddes, 24, accused of having child pornography after photographs and written stories. So what happened was she was seeing this guy and um, her page like looked up the guy that she was seeing and then found all of these child pornography accusations and they were like what the fuck like you can't have two boys and be with a pedo and so she ended up breaking up with him because obviously everyone's going to give a shit for it if she stayed with him as you would because no one wants that around their kids but then after they broke up she was like oh you guys there was one point she was like you guys ruined my life like I was so in love I love Teddy because she's called Teddy she's like I love Teddy and I broke up with him because you all made me and it's like what Seriously? Of course you should be breaking up with him. Yeah. There was actually two pedophiles that she dated. So there was that one. And then there was the other one as well. Oh, here we go. So this was when... So she started with the meth, obviously. Um, but she didn't until followers sent the info on him. Yeah, she didn't break up with him until the followers sent the info. That's when she broke up with him. But then afterwards... Like, three months down the track, she was real pissy at everyone because they did make her break up with him. They were like, you know, she was like, oh, you know, I loved him and this and that. And you guys all told me he was this. And, like, obviously it's true. Like, there's articles everywhere. Ew. Well, I don't know which one it is, but, like, post on the page, there is literally a picture of that dude going down on her. I don't know if that was Glenn or if that was the other one because they all kind of look the same. They're all, like greasy men yeah she knew about teddy because everyone told her about teddy and then yeah that's gross um anyway they're like it's a greasy dude but there's like a picture and she's going down on him there's a picture of him going down on her and i'm obviously not going to put on the video because i don't want to get it taken down but if you want to go and have a look at the page it's on the trigger warning one and you can literally see them doing that but apparently she had sent those pictures to sober life which is the Sober Life 420, which is her exposing page. Um, But someone told me yesterday, I think it was, are you on here, Abby? I was about to call you Shabby. (laughs) Shabby? Um, If she's on here, she said that there was a point where she went live having sex with this dude. But I think it might have been Glenn, like her and Glenn, and she went live. Because I remember there was a couple of times, like there was once where she went on live and she was like showing something and she just full put a boob out there and was like, it was an accident. It was like, that was no accident. It was wild. Anyway, but this is what she claimed had. I'll show you, she said she's getting a new lawyer. In the US, you get appointed a lawyer if you can't afford one. Is it different in Canada? Does anyone know? Mm, I don't know. I think there's a couple of Canadian people on this. Well, I think legal aid, you always get a new one. It's whoever's there at the time. Yeah, okay, so you remember that. Oh, my God. She accidentally went live. Who accidentally goes live during that? There is a lot of fucking buttons to push. I can barely remember how to go live. Every time I go live, I'm like, oh. Like, how do you accidentally go live? That is such a crock of shit. (laughs) Like, that girl will do anything for attention. I, I can only imagine what the response is going to be after this. But anyway, she claimed that she had dermatillomania. She did, like, a post saying, dermatillomania awareness. I developed this disorder from my PTSD, as the doctors have told me. It's a skin-picking disorder. <laughs> we know what this is. Not only has it made people stare and question, point and laugh, or even gawk at me, but this has made me hate myself. I feel so unattractive, so not beautiful. I have scabs all over my body due to movement under my skin that is actually not even there. That is called meth, my friends. You know, they talk about when you do ice and you get, it feels like you have bugs crawling under your skin so that people pick at them. Um, she says, so I pick out until it's, the feeling is gone and I don't even realise. I'm so ashamed of my body, so ashamed to be alive. Why did God decide I needed this along with everything else going on in my life. I literally just want to end my depression, end myself so badly, but no one seems to understand. I felt so alone. Even with people around, I feel empty. And not even my boy can cheer me up. That's how bad this has gotten. 
He was rubbing my face yesterday morning when I woke up and said, Mummy, your face. I'm so fucking lost. Now, this is the picture. Holy. Yeah, I know. That annoyed me too, Tiara. Like, don't don't try and put yourself in the same basket as these people that that do have these bad skin diseases and struggle and then you're on meth and you're picking at your scabs because of the choices that you had originally made. Like, I understand, like, it doesn't become a choice after a certain way, but it is your choice to take that first. Like, people tell you all the time. Like, people are always saying, you know, don't do meth. It is bad for you. This is going to happen. This could happen. That could happen. And people go, oh, fuck it, and they do it anyway. Same as when you're younger and you smoke, you know. Everyone knows it fucking kills you, but we still pick up cigarettes, don't we? And so it kind of annoys me that, I don't know, like it's, that first choice is still a choice. I trust my father, but anytime I'm doing it because I'm scared of accidentally calling someone. Oh, I know, exactly. My God, even like when I hang up the phone, if I'm like, you know, talking to a customer or something and I'm like, fuck me, dad. And I want to tell my husband like this, what a fuckhead. But I always like double check to make sure because I'm like, mm. Just in case, like sometimes you go get those customers that you're like, oh. But that elephant tattoo was like a home tattoo job. Like she had someone do it. I can't remember who it was, but I remember at the time just thinking, oh, it's a cute idea. Like I think the elephant's really cute if you were actually a mom. Um, a cute idea, but they were done so horrendously. Oh god. Yeah, it's really annoying to see a fake it. Like that's fucked. But so let me just read some of these. These are some of the questions you guys put in in my um, question box. Okay, so we have oh my god, there's so many. People said it looked like the elephants were giving anal. <laughs> it was like an elephant centipede. Okay, so the first question came in says we need to talk about the animals killed and abandoned count. The rabbits. So there was times where we actually had a couple of pictures of that too, but there was rabbits where she would fully wash the rabbits like you would with a dog, submerged in a bath, wash these rabbits. And people were like, you can't do that. You're going to scare them. It's really bad for them. They'll end up dying. And she wouldn't listen. Like people can't. And she's like, I've had rabbits before. Like I know how to look after a rabbit. This was like after the meth days or mid meth days. I don't know. But she was like, saying that she knew how to look after animals and then the rabbits were just dying and she said that the people that had it before her had given it drugs or something and that's why it died because they used to feed it drugs but i mean that was two months afterwards so i don't think they're going to survive it and then die two months afterwards and her floor was covered in rat poop and remember when she moved out and left her room all closed up with an animal inside she left it was it a cat there is a let me find the picture there it is that's their room. And I know you can't see it because it's like off a bit to the side. But Alison's like sitting on a couch on the left hand side. And that is their bedroom. And they left the cat there. I'm sure it was a cat that was left there. But the girl had joined. So she lived in this house with Glenn. So after she moved and all this crap went down with her mum. And she, she met Glenn. And they became homeless because they I think they lived in this house first. And then they were homeless. Can't remember what order it was in, but that was their room. They rented this this room. It was a cat. I, sh I was sure it was a cat, yeah. But, yeah, how bad is that? You cannot even see the floor. And this is someone who doesn't even have kids. Like, if I didn't have children, my house would be immaculate. Like, when I lived on my own, my house was always so clean. Like, I would cook and I would always do my dishes as I did it. Like, I would heat up dinner and I'd wash everything as I did it. Like nothing was ever out of place. Obviously when you have kids, it's a bit harder because you're like doing it four times and they just fucking leave toys scattered everywhere. But like these are two grown adults living in that. That is filth. Like, you know, I understand like you've got one room, but I mean, you can see rubbish bags there and, and stuff. Like you could at least stack it to look good, you know? Oh my God. That's the worst. Like, our house sometimes will get, like, unruly and I'm like, okay, I'm taking a day off today and I'm just going to clean, clean, clean. Like, sometimes, like, I like to do most of my stuff on weekends because I do work sometimes, um, depending on, like, today I took the day off just so we could do this. I was like, I'm not going to work today. We're going to talk about Alison instead. It's too hot outside. But, like, sometimes ours will get unruly where it's like, 
the kids will like start a, a game somewhere and then they'll leave that and they'll move on to something else. And you know, it'll, it's Sunday and I'm like, I'm not doing that right now. Um, and then, so like on the Monday, it's like clean up day or whatever where I'll, but I, I wouldn't leave it get, it's nothing. It would never be like that. Yeah. Julia's garage. Yeah, it's not even possessions, it's just shit. And there's no kids there. Like, how can you have a room that messy? Like, where is the fucking cat? It's probably, like, jammed down behind the wall somewhere, suffocating. Yeah. That's bad. There was a time, like, where I thought she could do it. Like, when Al- when Alaya said to her, you know, gave her that job opportunity, like, Alaya said to her, I'll come and get you. Like, I'll get you a, a bus ticket. You come here, you can live with me, I've got a job for you, it's all fine. And she didn't go. She, like, turned her down. And then, like, turned around somehow. No, she didn't have the kids at this time. This was just her and Glenn living at a friend's house. And when they left this house, the house had, like, holes all through the walls. There was holes all through the walls. Like, see that? You can, oh, I'll try and show you. Like, look at that. And there's another whole wall covers. They've obviously, they've had to patch those walls because of the mess that they've left everywhere. But there was like, there's another one on the lounge room. It's just terrible. Yeah. I don't think she wants them either. I don't, I don't, I don't think she ever really wanted them. I don't think she wanted the, like, she wanted the label of a mum because it helped her with the whole, you know, Instagram, Insta famous shit. But I don't think she actually wanted to care for them. I think she more wanted... It was like a, you know, Janelle Evans when she first had Jace. Like, she wanted to be able to go out and party and do whatever she wanted and then come home to be a mum and end up in the same situation. They always end up that way. I know. What did they do in that house? I, I don't know, but she left... The, like, who, who leaves that fucking pet behind? Like, just... I don't even know what happened with them. But the girl said... I just have to open my inbox... The girl, like, they, they, I think they must have had, like, a falling out or something. It's at the top. Or she could have alcohol, drugs, and using men. Yeah. So, this girl says, I lived with her and Glenn for a month. The lease was signed in my name. Rent was supposed to be split so that it was $700 each as a total amount each month was $1,400. That's cheap rent. <laughs> I'm on Wish and only get fifteen eighty eight for the month, obviously. Her and Glenn never paid their part of the rent, only leaving me with $188 a month to get my three dogs and now two kittens, their food and my BFS food, which is fine as, oh, my boyfriend's food, which is fine as my boyfriend has a job. She caused a lot of damage to the house that I later on had to fix up. She also caused me to go into a wicked panic attack that my boyfriend said caused me to go to overheat and go into a seizure, which I stopped breathing three to four times. She also tried to tell me that I didn't need my service dog. She doesn't see it fit as I don't have seizures all that often. And I'm always around my boyfriend. Like, okay. Oh, God, that room is fucked. There's like a lizard tank in there too, I think. The one she got matching tattoos with recently or the one from like skinny alley days? No, I don't. I don't even even remember her really having a female friend, to be honest. You're not talking about a liar, a are you? She's not really heavy set, but she has massive boobs. <laughs> like, um, but otherwise, I don't know who you mean. There's another. There's another one here. It says this is off the sober fire page. Glenn used to date this girl. I don't remember her name, and she cheated on him and had a baby. He was creeping her Facebook one day and looking at her kid. He thinks the kid looks like him and thinks it's his. He was convinced and she didn't even say or tell him it's his. He can't have kids because apparently his sister kicked him in the balls with work boots. <laughs> okay. If Alison was pregnant and had a miscarriage and she cheated on Glenn or was making it all up. And Glenn's full name is Robert Glenn Field. Yeah, he's been in jail for weapons, charges and drugs. Last time he was there was because of me. So whoever this is had sent it into the, the Sober Life page, right? But there was a point there where she faked... So many pregnancies, or even not even just faking them. It was like she would um, upload a picture of a belly and be like, oh, like, I think I'm like, I'm feeling really bloated. Like I took a test, but 
um, or she would, she'd refuse to take a test. And she'd be like, people, do I look pregnant? And this would go on like every single month. Like she was obsessed with being pregnant. Talked about how Glenn could, yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, yeah. And she, remember she used to always, it'd be like, pose in front of the mirror and she would have like a bit of bloat and she'd be like oh my god like I really feel pregnant like my boobs are hurting and I've got this and I've got that and it was like just the same symptoms that you get you know when you have the same those overlapping symptoms that you can get with pregnancy but you can also get them when you have your period um she would do that like every single month it was crazy yeah she wouldn't test she would just like do the blo- oh my god that used to drive me insane because I and everyone would be like just take a test She's like oh yeah no and like she probably couldn't afford a test because like after they left this house I'm sure that's when they went on the street like they were literally living in a tent on the street it was crazy what else have we got because she got really skinny do you remember when she got like super skinny there's another one here it says favorite picture of my husband and I yes we are legally married we left the certificate with our witness so we would not lose it being homeless we got married at a courthouse and when I can, I'll get the certificate and post it. Sorry, I didn't have a phone at the time. We got it certified, so I didn't get a picture. Have a lovely day. Max's baby, I love you. How weird is that? That's the picture there. But then she later on admitted that that, that was a lie as well. She admitted they weren't pregnant, though, like, recently, I thought. Talked about how Glenn and her were married, but then how she admitted it was a lie. Yeah. And, like, she literally says here that she had a witness and they kept the certificate and she was going to post it later. It was all because she was like, oh, my husband. And people were like, it's not your husband. And she's like, he's my street husband. <laughs> I'll look at that message right now. Hold on one sec. Oh. Amy Van der Molen. So it's Bakery Girl 6969. She does look like Alison. My God. I'll have to post that. A much healthier looking Alison though, honestly. Yes, I remember her now. <clears throat> yes, I remember her. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. There was a picture of Ali when she was like, maybe 14. And she was so pretty. So pretty. Yeah, honestly, Jess, there is... I remember I seen a picture of her and she was like maybe 14 in the picture, I think. And she was so pretty. It was forever ago. But she was really, really pretty. It was unreal. I was like, wow, that is not the same girl. Like just, you know, I, I think though that's just one of the things that you pay for when you do do drugs. Like it's all for, well and good. But at the end of the day, it's not good for your skin. It's not good for... Like I have met people that used to be crazy on drugs. And you know, you know how like when you have a baby, you might get a little bit of stretched out skin or whatever. And that's what their skin seems to be like before they've even had babies. Like they have that skin, that doughy feeling. Like, you know, when you just have a baby and your skin kind of, it's like that doughy feeling until it all tightens back up again. That's what it reminds me of. The teeth are really bad. I don't understand why she doesn't do something about the teeth. Because you can get them, like, she should be able to get them whitened from it. But I don't know what drugs do. Do they change the teeth from the inside out or is it just the outside of it? I don't know. There'd have to be something you can do. Um, so what, the next one, the responses in my teed up, like, in the um, questions on my story. I can't choose where to start. I've known her forever and even have her, even had her live with me at one point. Oh, my God. Where is this person? Why are they not on this life? <laughs> Someone said when she said she was raped, she said once it was by a black man and that was why she was scared of black men. Yeah, weight change. Yeah, that's definitely true. Now, there actually is a comment. These ones. Um, she wrote, a fun fact, Christopher is one-eighth black. And then she says, like some of the stuff she says is just so gross. Like, she goes, Justin is one quarter, and I didn't know till after I got pregnant, explaining the big lips. Fun fact, Christopher is one-eighth black. But she used to say, like, some of the nastiest shit. Like, she was so racist, and then she, and then she was like, well, but I'm allowed to be racist because I was raped by a black man. 
And when now we know that's all that's all a lie as well. But either way, like I'm sorry, <laughs> that's not how it works. Like <laughs> someone said, "Love you for this, lol." When she let her son's face rot, and the second her mum took him, it got better, which we've talked about that one. When she was street married to that guy when she was homeless, that's Glenn who we're talking about now. Her letting her son's skin get so bad it looked like it was rotting. Um, someone said, meth head days, married to Glenn, living in a tent and the miscarriages. So there was a lot of miscarriages claimed. Like there was a, a lot of miscarriages claimed. So wouldn't that make her quarter black or Justin quarter black? So Justin apparently is a qu quarter black. So he has, yeah, he has one mixed parent, I take it that means, and then, yeah. Someone said the horrible eczema rash on her kid, yeah. Oh, so many, when she had mess scabs from picking her face but insisted it was a skin disorder. Someone said her multiple marriages. Um, when she posted a picture of her with her butt plug in. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Stop!